Hello everybody, this is Dr. P, and today I wanted to make a video talking about the CBSC. Um, we'll talk about what the exam is, how I studied for the CBSC in dental school compared to how I studied for the USMLE exams in medical school, and things I wish I would have done differently, as well as some resources that I use and would recommend you guys use for success on the exam. All right, so let's briefly talk about the CBSC. This is a test that dental students um, can take, as well as dentists if they decide to apply to oral surgery or dental anesthesia uh, residencies. And they must take this in order to apply to the program. It is a test that you register for using the Amos website. There are a few links on there that kind of guide you through the registration process. Basically, you can take this test up to six times total in your uh, lifetime and you are responsible for uploading your best score to your residency application. Um, you can take the test twice a year, I believe, and that's usually around February and July. You have to register well in advance. Um, it's composed of about 180 to 200 multiple choice questions, about four blocks of an hour or so each. And you can take this exam during dental school or at any point after dental school. Um, it is a pricey exam. It's about $300. So let me start off by saying that this video is not sponsored by anybody and all of the opinions of this video are my own. Um, and we'll jump into the study materials that I use and would or would not recommend you guys use in preparation for this exam. So let's start with the free study materials here. So the first material that I used in medical school that I did not use in dental school was Anking. Anking is essentially a deck of flashcards um, called Anki that are free and you download it online. And I think I uh, followed, I searched Reddit for it. Um, just anking USMLE step one. You download this deck and basically free to use their flashcards that you have to do every day. Um, and I did about 500 flashcards or so when I studied for the USMLE step one and step two exams in medical school, but I didn't know about this resource in dental school. So basically all the stuff that are written in first aid, and we'll talk about what first aid is in just a second. Um, all that information is in a flashcard format and free to use. And basically it forces you to study new material as well as review old material every day. Um, I guess the downside to it is there are some low yield cards mixed in and it's kind of hard to tell as a demo student like what is high yield versus what is not. Um, so I think that's the biggest downside to this resource. This is my deck for step two. Um, the Anking step one deck looks uh, fairly similar, obviously different topics. Um, but basically, this is what the interface looks like. Each one of these is like a set of uh, flashcards. Um, there's usually like thousands of them per topic. Um, and here it says like how many new cards I have to do, how many are due or overdue. I haven't used this deck in a while because I took step two like two months ago. Um, but basically, I'll show you what the interface looks like. You'll click on a topic here, you say study, here's a flashcard, um, and then you think of the term that goes in here, um, hit the space bar, the answer comes up, and then on the bottom, basically, you put, um, if you thought this card was hard, you can put again, and it will reappear in your deck within 10 minutes, versus if you were good, um, this particular card will reappear in 8.7 months, or if this was easy, a year from now, this card will reappear in the deck, and I won't see it again kind of thing um and so yeah it just goes through the different topics and this is how anki works another free resource that i found in medical school that i didn't know about in dental school is called pixarize so essentially it's like sketchy again we'll talk about sketchy down the line here um but basically you go to youtube you can type pixarize and you'll see that they have a bunch of different videos available um and they have high yield drugs in certain conditions for me i benefited most from the porphyria videos i just searched uh pixarize this is their page right here like i said i only watched a few videos here uh, but very similar to the uh sketchy concept um so they have different um, subcategories so if you go to the medicine and usmle so these ones are will be the ones that are most relevant to the test 
that you'll be taking the CBSC. The last free resource that I use that I recommend, um, and I use this resource for both medical school and dental school, and they're called the Golian Pathology uh, Lecture Series, and they are available on YouTube. Basically, Dr. Golian is a pathologist that does the USMLE Step 1 reviews for students, and uh, some of his reviews have been recorded and posted on the internet. And how I use these, both in medical school and in dental school, was whenever I had downtime in terms of like driving or exercising or going on a walk or whatever, doing chores around the house, I would play his lectures. Um, and that way I could passively listen to content. And I think he's very engaging and he's funny and it's really easy to listen to his lectures. And here are all the different topics that he has available. And I think I've listened to all of these and found all of these to be super helpful. Um, so you can see each video is about 50 minutes or so. And again, this is just an audio recording um, of him lecturing a class. And sometimes he does show photos and path slides and stuff on the screen that you obviously cannot see. But regardless, I still found this resource super helpful. Um, so check it out. So let's talk about briefly the paid research resources that I use and would recommend to you all. So the number one paid resource in studying for the USMLE and the CBSC that everyone must have is UWorld. Um, this is an absolute must. I cannot stress this enough. Basically, it's this giant question bank. Um, I kid you now, there's like 3,700 questions in it um, with explanations for every question and every answer choice, as well as just like citations, um, things like that uh, for the USMLE or the CBSC, right? Um, the downside is, is that it starts at like $319 for one month or $439 for three months. So it is a little bit pricey, but this is an absolute must. They do have a demonstration that you can view um, to see whether or not this is something that you want to do. And again, this is a must resource, guys. Uh, you really have to buy UWorld, um, but we can view their demo and see what this looks like here. Um, basically... And this is what the screen looks like. So you go here to like create test. And honestly, I would do it on random guys. Um, so you want to uh, select the subject areas. Honestly, just do it, everything at random. It helps you remember things um, better. And it's a, it's much more uh, effective than studying it one topic at a time. Um, and you can do a question block of uh, 40 here. Um, so let's see. I don't know if this will let me actually make a test, but we can see. 10 questions only, okay, whatever. Um, so this is what it looks like here. Um, so I don't know what this, this is, I'm not gonna read it, but you can see the interface and this interface, this test interface is just like the CBSC or the USMLE. Um, so that's very uh, perfect. The other paid resource that uh, some people use and I did use, but I actually got uh, one of these for free that had been published by this uh, or bought by the school, but basically it's the NBME exams. Um, these are just sample exams, multiple choice, but they don't have explanations associated with them. And really the use of these exams is to see where your test score would lie if you are interested. Um, and I only did that because it was free. I don't think I would have gone out of my way to purchase one of those exams because again, I don't think it's not a learning tool. It's an assessment tool, right? So it's just to see how am I doing and what score do I expect, expect to get versus teach me medicine. So another paid resource is called Sketchy. Um, and back when I took the CBSC, um, Sketchy was separate. So you could buy like a Sketchy Micro or a Sketchy Pharmacology kind of based on whatever um, fields or topics that you wanted to learn. And now I think it's all combined into one program. The downside is that this is kind of expensive. It's $300 for six months. Um, the upside to Sketchy is honestly, I learned so much microbiology through them and I only use the microbiology section. Um, and I felt really comfortable uh, with all my exams, the USMLE and CBSC through Sketchy. All right, so this is the sample Sketchy Micro video that I found on YouTube. I just searched Sketchy and this is their older video for Salmonella. I'm pretty sure they have a newer video now, um, but you guys get the idea. Um, so they start drawing different symbols and things that 
represent uh, key components of the microbiology. Um, another paid resource is Pathoma. This is a book of about 218 pages, um, as well as some lectures that Dr. Sitar gives. He's a pathologist. Um, basically the lectures are like PowerPoints uh, with a voiceover and he writes on the screen and stuff. And then the book is like a summary, um, although he does include more information as, in his video and you can take notes on the side of the book. Um, and I thought this was really helpful as a dental student. And I will say till this day, I'm like two months away from graduating medical school and I still look at that book um, probably once a month just to get a refresher on something. So this is something that I continue to use um, and I would highly recommend Pathoma. I also think it's quite affordable. I think it's $85 or so for the book and for the lectures. So highly recommend Pathoma. So guys, really briefly, this is what the Pathoma book all looks like here. I, I don't have it with me currently, um, but this is just a screenshot that I found on the internet. I think there are several editions. Um, anyway, fairly thin book, lots of information. Um, and this is a screenshot that I found here on the right. Um, very blurry, I think on purpose, <laughs> so we don't steal their content here. Um, but anyway, just a screenshot I got off the internet. And just so you can see what the inside of the book looks like. So it's not all pathology at the bottom of the pages. There's some pathology images for you to look at, but um, it goes over various um, various uh, medical concepts here in each chapter. So another resource that everyone talks about is first aid. Essentially, it's this giant book. You can buy a new or a used edition. They're pretty similar, the different editions, one to the next. Um, basically, I think... A new version is about $60 on Amazon and then you can find cheaper used versions online. And essentially what this is, this is a giant book of like high yield diagrams, high yield facts. And this is the book that I was using to study hardcore the first time I took the CBSE. Didn't do so well um, because I didn't realize that this is not a learning tool. This is a review tool. This is like you forgot something, you want to look really quickly. Oh yeah, that's the diagram I wanted to see. Perfect. I got it. Like you don't need to read this book. And like I said before, the Anki decks that are totally free have the same exact information in them. And I just downloaded a couple of sample pages on the internet. Um, so you can see this is kind of what it's like. It's essentially just some high yield facts about various uh, topics. So let's start off with my recommendations for dental students tackling the CBSE. Um, honestly, you want to give yourself plenty of time to study for this test because it is expensive. It is very anxiety provoking. It's a stressful exam. Um, and remember that, you know, you are a dental student. Likely you don't have medical school classes. If you do, that's a bonus, but most people don't. Um, so don't feel bad if you don't do super well on this exam because at least my dental, dental school didn't teach me this information. Um, so just remember, like you're studying for your doctor and you're also trying to take this exam that covers, you know, the first two years of medical school. Um, so don't feel bad if you aren't doing well. Having said that, give yourself plenty of time to study for this exam and only take it once. Um, it is expensive, time consuming. Um, so you want to give yourself the best shot of doing well the first time and not having to retake it. So having said that, what are my recommendations now that I've taken the CBSE twice and I've taken both USMLE step one and USMLE step two at this point in time. Um, so I have changed my study schedule around completely from the first time I took the CBC to my latest go around at USMLE step two. Um, and what I employed into my studying schedule is kind of what my medical school teaches by. Basically most of my medical school classes, what they would do is like either at the start of the day or at the end of the day, they would give us a quiz that just counted for like participation or something. And they were questions that we were not taught that we were going to learn in the future at some point. Um, and so of course you, you take this quiz and you do really poorly on it, but the medical school had told us like all the, all, all there's all this research out there that supports that if you see something in a question format, you think about it, you're stressed because you're in like a test like environment, you're going to remember this information better. And when you come across it in the future, you're also going to uh, pay attention to it. Um, and that was their whole strategy. And I didn't buy into it for step one until kind of the very end um, in studying for it. And then I totally bought into it for step two. And honestly, this is what I would recommend. So to mirror, mirror my medical school environment, what I did was um, basically set UWorld on random at the very start. 
um, and I would just do about 20 to 40 questions a day. And this is throughout the, the my time in medical school, whether I was studying for step one or step two, um, more so for step two, and just do the questions. And if I didn't do so well, oh, well, like that's how I was learning. And it took me about a month of doing that before I really saw improvements in my scores. And honestly, for step two, that was my only resource, main resource, I should say, that I used. Whereas for step one, I didn't quite buy into that theory just yet. Um, and I wish I had. Um, so adding on to that, I would say um, Anki is a really good resource because um, it forces you to review things and it forces you to kind of study ahead um, and kind of have a good study schedule so that these cards don't pile up on you. Um, so for me, I would advise you guys to start Anki at least six months before the CBSC. And I would say do at least 300 or so cards a day at minimum and skip reading first aid in general. Um, in fact, I don't think you even need to buy this resource um, because Anki has all that information in it and UWorld has all that information in it. Um, so in addition to doing those cards, you wanna start UWorld and I would say you wanna do at least three months of UWorld and I would aim to start off with the 40 questions a day and increase to about 80 questions at least three weeks or so before your exam. And you wanna read all the explanations on there for all the wrong answers and for the right answers. So whenever you do the question, read the whole thing because there's so much information on there and it's critical. Um, and that's the best possible resource for you to learn medicine outside of a medical school curriculum. I would also recommend that when you start studying for the CBSC, again, I would ideally recommend about six months um, at minimum, I would say three months, at minimum three months, um, if your school has more of a didactic medical school based curriculum. Um, and I would start listening to Golian lectures when you're driving to school or when you're working out or when you're doing dishes or whatever that you're doing. Um, I would start listening to him. I think he's very entertaining and very easy to um, keep up with and learn um, information. And he j doesn't just focus on pathology. Um, he talks about um, some general medicine co concepts as well that are very useful. I would recommend you guys buy Pathoma um, and do at least a couple of lectures a week and get through all the lectures um, before the CBSC. Again, I thought the book was very helpful um, if you are going the medical school route. Um, I always reference this book like at least once, twice a month. Um, and now I've already been through medical school and I still think it's that good of a resource and I personally really love it. Um, I would also say to consider Sketchy if it is affordable for you. Um, I thought Sketchy Micro personally saved me because um, I had a very poor microbiology background um, coming into the CBSC. Um, and I did not use pathology or farm, so I can't comment on that content. But again, consider it, try the free trial, see if this is something that you can invest in. And then lastly, the point I wanna make, cause I hear this all the time, students saying like, I'm gonna take a practice run of the CBSC from Amos just to get a feel for it. And I think this is not the smartest of ideas because the test is expensive, you will likely not do well. Um, you're not gonna learn anything because there's no explanations. Um, and if you're just taking it just to see what it's like or what score you're going to get, then just take an NBME. It's much cheaper um, and it's fairly predictive of the score you're going to get. Uh, so if you want to practice, take a self-assessment UWorld or take an NBME. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, just comment down below. Um, if you have any suggestions for future uh, videos, please either shoot me a message or leave some comments and I'll see you guys next time.